A few words about Georgia. Uh, it is Georgia is an independent Eastern European nation situated on the Black Sea coast between Russia and Turkey. It is a small country with a population of 3.7 million and upper middle economy as classified by the, by the World Bank. Hepatite EC has been identified as a major public health, public health problem back in 2002 when the first population-based survey conducting among residents of a capital city of Tbilisi found the antibody prevalence of 6.7%. In 2015, um, the new national representative survey was conducted uh, with the support of US CDC, which also confirmed the high prevalence of infection, with an estimated 5.4% of now, adult general population is living with a chronic uh, infection, which is around 150,000 persons. The bar chart on the right shows the HCV genotype distribution. You can see that genotype 1 is the most frequent, 41%, followed by genotype 3 and the genotype 2. The prevalence of uh, chronic uh, HCV infection is significantly higher among men, um, uh, which is particularly high among the age category of 40 to 49, with an estimated prevalence of 18.6%. Looking at this data by age categories gives us the idea that um, the, the massive spread of HCV in Georgia took place, probably took place in the 1990s after the dissolution of Soviet Union, which was an, accompanied also by the uh, unrest in the country, collapse of public health and social protection systems, and the rapid increase in, the, uh, in injection drug use. Uh, people who inject drugs have the highest prevalence of HCV, approaching 70% among HIV-positive PWIDs. Uh, HIV, HIV is also common among HIV and TB patients, which can be explained by the significant overlap between uh, HCV, HIV, TB, and drug use epidemics. Uh, this is, the, again, data from the 2015 National Survey, which also looked at the risk factors for HCV infection. Now, approximately 34% of you know, HCV-positive persons in this survey reported history of injection drug use. 15% had um, the blunt transfusion as a major risk factor, and I would like to note that screening for HCV infection within the National you know, Blood Safety Program in Georgia started a bit late, only in 1997, and besides, there were some concerns also um, about the way the program is operating, and that's why the blunt transfusion is identified as a major risk factor in Georgia. Uh, up to 5% had, uh, had reported both IDU and um, the history of blood transfusion. And 46.7% of the uh, survey respondents did not report either of the risk factors, and we can only uh, speculate on how, how they got the infection. Of course, uh, of course, known disclosure of certain behaviors, such as injection drug use, should not be ruled out, but we have the serious suspicion that inadequate infection control practices in, uh, in both in healthcare and non-healthcare settings play the most important role in acquiring the virus in this population. So high burden of hepatitis C and, uh, and resulting high social demand on treatment you know, generated momentum for uh, scaling up HCV treatment in the country. It started in 2011 with a free dual therapy program for you know, HIV, HCV client infected persons, followed by free program for prisoners in 2013, and culminated with the launch of the, the world's first hepatitis C elimination program in April 2015. Um, the elimination program was possible through a uh, partnership with US CDC and the commitment from the Gilead Sciences to donate its direct acting antivirals free of charge for our program. So why, uh, why, why was Georgia chosen as the first model country for elimination? Um, there were a number of factors, including the uh, high prevalence of HCV and the small size of the country, also existence of human and technical capacities, which obviously are essential for conducting um, uh, large-scale public health programs such as elimination, and most importantly, there is strong governmental commitment and the political will towards uh, controlling and uh, ending the HCV epidemic in the country. Uh, the, goal, the overall goal of the program is to uh, eliminate HCV by 2020, primarily through identifying and treating hepatitis C patients, strengthened you know, with effective uh, prevention interventions toward zero knee infection. We all understand that in the classical definitions of eradication and uh, or elimination cannot be fully applied to HCV situation. Therefore, we define the elimination as a 90% reduction in HCV prevalence, 2.5% by, uh, by 2020. The treatment, um, uh, the HCV treatment is a cornerstone of the elimination programs, and accordingly, we, um, uh, we set the ambitious treatment targets inspired by the UNHCR 390s, but we formulated them as 1995-95, so that by 2020, 90% of the people living with HCV in Georgia are diagnosed, 95% of those diagnosed are treated, and 95% of those treated are cured. 
In 2016, the government of Georgia approved strategic plan on hepatitis C, which provides um, the roadmap to HCV elimination in the country. Um, it is important to note that uh, the strategy doesn't rely only on treatment, but also but, but it rather supports a comprehensive approach towards elimination and identifies the six strategic directions, including promote advocacy, awareness, education, and partnership, prevent HCV transmission, identify people living with HCV, improve HCV laboratory diagnostics, provide treatment and care to all, and improve HCV surveillance. In addition to uh, outlining key activities, the national plans also provide the estimate of the budget needed for achieving the goal of elimination. According to this document, the government of Georgia is committing to allocate more than 57 million US dollars over the next five years through 2020, um, which, which I would say the substantial amount of money for a country like Georgia, and this once again underlines our will and commitment towards defeating this epidemic. Um, I also would like to underline that um, uh, um, uh, that elimination program really provides a unique opportunity for uh, for um, uh, for leveraging greater benefits beyond hepatitis C, and the funds allocated for the elimination program uh, will be also used, will also cover very important cross-cutting issues such as improvement in in, in blood safety, improvement in uh, infection prevention and control practices. Also, you know, promoting harm reduction will be helpful for preventing new HIV infections and other harms related to um, you know, drug use and so on. So basically, we get much more with every dollar invested in the elimination program, and this is very important for the, you know, for the country. Uh, the, the first strategic direction uh, um, uh, emphasizes the importance of partnerships. Local uh, and international partnerships have been um, the pivotal for starting the programs, and of course, we, we are going to sustain these partnerships. Uh, example of local, uh, successful local partnership is the National Commission on the Hepatitis C Elimination, with, which is a multi-sectoral body governing the implementation of the entire program. This commission is represented by the uh, governmental and non-governmental organizations, as well as pub by public health and clinical experts. Uh, support provided by U.S. Uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, remains uh, very important for the uh, program implementation. And of course, nothing would have happened without the uh, general support from the Gilead Sciences. I also would like to highlight our partnership with LIFER and ECHO Project, led by Dr. Nidaftal and the Sanjeev Arora. Uh, and these partnerships really helped us to, the, to strengthen our human capacity and uh, develop national treatment protocols. Uh, awareness campaigns have been underway in the country since the start of the uh, program, and these uh, campaigns um, um, uh, are meant to mobilize communities and inform public health uh, general population about um, hepatitis C. This is the ad from the latest campaign, which encourages people to, to get tested, uh, to get treated, and of, or, and of course to cure the virus towards future without C, which is the uh, slogan, uh, overall slogan of this uh, awareness campaign. Uh, the national plan envisions also scale up of the uh, prevention interventions for people who inject drugs in order to prevent primary infections and, uh, and also to uh, prevent uh, reinfections after successful treatment. Uh, so we need to make sure that prevention effects of the treatment are, are sustained in the long term. Harm reduction services such as needle and syringe exchange program and opioid substitution treatment have been available in Georgia for more than a decade and the national pl plan um, uh, aims at sustaining and further expanding uh, these services, along with int intensified uh, HCV case finding and treatment. Uh, the challenge here is a repressive drug policy, which is unfortunately is in place in Georgia, uh, similar to many other Eastern European countries, but um, and which is a major barrier actually for ensuring high coverage with respective services. Um, uh, but luckily, we see the signs of upcoming changes, which we anticipate to have the major, the major public health impacts. The pressure for drug policy reforms in Georgia has been mounting for many years, particularly from civil society activists, as well as from public health experts in academia. And, uh, and, and in fact, the hepatitis C elimination program really helped us to, um, uh, to accelerate these processes. Um, you know, we already see a readiness for changes from hiring Georgian politicians, and, uh, and the strongest, um, the strongest statement came out very recently from the Prime Minister of Georgia, who called on Parliament of Georgia to amend these punitive laws. Um, and I think that with this statement, we finally came to the point in Georgia when we all agree that success comes only with evidence-based evidence policies and actions. Uh, important direction of our activities is prevention of healthcare-related transmission of HCV. Uh, improvements are proposed in blood safety programs to, uh, to address existing caveats, which include 
um, you know, reliance on uh, antibody testing, high proportion of paid donations, and lack of um, the quality assurance mechanisms in many uh, blood um, in many institutions. Um, as I said, um, we have the suspicion that a significant proportion of HCV infections in Georgia are uh, a result of inadequate prevention control practices, infection prevention control practices, which has been addressed by introducing new regulations and policies which are listed on the slide. So uh, now we need to make sure that these new regulations which have been approved after the start of the uh, elimination program, uh, that these regulations are implemented on a daily practice in every you know, facilities across the country. The Ministry of Health together with the National CDC are actively engaged in this process. Of course, um, uh, identifying people living with HCV is a, is a major activity of the elimination program, which might be also the, uh, might be also the um, uh, most challenging part of our 1995-95 targets. Um, the screening for HCV infection is covered through various programs, um, uh, which, which, uh, which cover both high-risk groups and the general population. Key population at risk who are routinely screened for HCV include people living with HIV, people who inject drugs, and the prisoners. And um, uh, we are now also expanding the HCV screening programs for uh, men who have sex with men. And, uh, given the uh, high prevalence of HCV in general populations, recently we introduced uh, universal screening programs for pregnant women and all hospitalized patients. So basically, every person who, uh, who enters the hospitals in Georgia are now offered free tests for HCV. Uh, in addition to this, um, the screening and uh, screening HCV specialized HCV screening sites are established across the country using the existing public health infrastructure. Uh, overall, since the start of the uh, program, more than 470,000 persons were screened for HCV, and up to 50,000 of them were positive for HCV antibodies. So, HCV treatment. Uh, this is a map showing the number of treatment sites operating countrywide. We started the program with four uh, highly experienced specialty clinics in the capital of the city of Tbilisi, and we increased the number to 20 sites and 139 physicians uh, delivering HCV care uh, across, across entire Georgia. Uh, but we are not stopping here. We, uh, we are further expanding the access to treatment through decentralizing and um, simplifying the treatment modalities. And as a result, we already integrated treatment sites within harm reduction services for people who inject drugs um, and also consider engaging primary healthcare, uh, primary healthcare providers. The, um, the, this slide shows a, a snapshot from the, um, from the electronic health information system, Shopwood C elimination. This was developed specifically for the uh, elimination program, and um, uh, this, um, uh, this system captures uh, information on every individual enrolled in the elimination program, including uh, demographic, clinical, and laboratory data. Uh, so, of course, the system are used as the major source of the data for assessing program performance and um, uh, treatment effectiveness, real-world treatment effectiveness, and I'm going to show you some of the data um, uh, a bit later. So the program started in April 2015, um, and at this point, the Sofosbuir was the only DAA available within the program, and it was used in combination with pegylated interferon in ribavirin or with ribavirin only without interferon. Initially, uh, treatment was offered based on the certain criteria, which included um, the advanced liver damage, that is F3 or F4 fibrosis, also HIV, HCV co-infection, or presence of severe extrahepatic manifestations. Uh, we abolished this criteria in June 2016, and now treatment is offered to all, which also, of course, resulted in significant increase in the number of persons starting treatment. By the end of 2016, more than 20,000 persons were uh, persons were started on treatment, and majority of them, more than 20,000, received treatment with Lipasvir sofosbuir based regimens. And the introduction of the Lipasvir sofosbuir in March 2016 marked another important milestone for our program impl implementation as it helped us to you know, significantly improve cure rates and also it's helped us to um, the simplify treatment approaches, which we are a very important factor for uh, um, expanding the access to, uh, to this life-saving treatment. So moving to uh, treatment outcomes, um, you know, these are the SVR rate achieved with the sofosbuir based treatments. Let me once again remind you that initially only sofosbuir was um, available for the program and um, uh, treatment at this point was prioritized for patients with advanced liver disease. So basically this cohort was entirely represented by difficult to treat patients with advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis. 
who were treated with sofosbuvir only, and I guess that is why the, uh, the overall SVR rate was only 79.5% with interferon-based treatment of regimens um, performing um, uh, much better than sofriba alone. Uh, analysis by genotype shows that um, uh, showed that um, the lowest response rate was in genotype 1 patients, 67.7%, and it was particularly low among patients with receiving sofriba with a um, 55% SVR rate. The good news here is that um, uh, all these patients who failed on sofosbuvir-based treatment are now successfully retreated um, uh, with ladipasvir sofosbuvir with very high cure rates. Um, the interferon-based treatment achieved in the cure rates of exceeding 95% among genotype 2 and genotype 3 patients, and the highest overall response rate was seen in patients with genotype 3 approaching 90%, and difference with other genotypes was you know, statistically significant. Uh, this is, again, data for the uh, for sofosbuvir stratified by cirrhosis status, as it would be expected with patients without cirrhosis had better response rates, except of you know, genotype 2 patients for some reason. Uh, and again, the highest response rate was in genotype 3 patients, approaching 95% among those you know, without cirrhosis. Um, this is the data now for, uh, for ladipasvir sofosbuvir. Now, the drug is now prescribed to all patients in all genotypes, including genotype 2 and genotype 3, uh, we are after this decision together with a group of our international um, uh, advisors represented by top hepatologists such as uh, Dr. Dr. Stefan Zoitzem, Nidaftal, and Jeffrey Dusheko. Initially, there were some concerns about the approach, but um, uh, real world um, the results show that the approach is indeed effective. You can see that Harmony was highly effective with an overall SVR rate of 98%. Um, there was no differences between genotypes, 98% SVR for genotype 1, uh, 99 for genotype 2, and 97.6% for genotype 3. Uh, importantly, the drug was equally effective uh, both in cirrhotic and non-cirrhotic patients. Um, uh, in fact, for genotype 2 patients, we had anticipation of high, you know, of high cure rates because majority of genotype 2 strains in Georgia are in fact so-called chimera viruses representing um, a recombination between genotype 2 and genotype 1, and these chimera viruses we are supposed to, uh, we are supposed to very well respond to harmony. But for genotype 3, uh, the, the QR rates um, actually exceeded our expectations, uh, although the numbers are still low right now, but we, we hope that uh, uh, the high QR rates will persist in the future as well. So very briefly about our progress and projected impact. This slide shows our current progress towards 1995-95 targets, They're shown in the, in the form of cascades constructed for various time points, namely for October 2015 in blue color, September 2016 in orange, and gray color shows our you know, gray columns show our achievement as of end of 2016. Uh, this slide shows that you know, we are making good progress in less than two-year period. We were man managed to uh, to register uh, more than 36,000 uh, persons, to treat more than 20,000, and to cure more than 5,000 persons. Uh, more recent updates suggest that by 2000, uh, June 2017, uh, more than 40,000 persons, we are already started on treatment, and of course the number of patients clearing the virus has been increasing accordingly. So uh, this is the same data with the addition of the projected cascade for 2020, shown in, in, in red columns. And, then, and this projected cascade is based on the assumption that 1995-95 targets will be met as it is planned. So achieving these targets you know, will very much depend on uh, achieving the first 90, that is diagnosing 135,000 uh, persons by 2020, along with ensuring high rates for linkage and treatment. Um, it is going to be uh, challenging, but we are not giving up and to continue to work hard to get this number going up towards the final, uh, the final target of curing more than 120,000 persons, which is the only way for us to uh, significantly reduce the burden of disease and um, uh, maximize the, uh, the prevention effect of the treatments towards zero new infections. Um, so I would like to uh, finish my talk with, by showing the data from the recent modeling study conducted um, by the group from University of Bristol, uh, specifically for our program, um, for our elimination program. Uh, the projection shows that you know, with the current treatment rate of treating around 25,000 persons per year, we are, uh, we are almost there. We are very close to achieving the uh, goal of 90% reduction in HCV prevalence 
while increasing the rate to treating uh, 30,000 persons per year, will surely achieve the goal by 2020. The same impact is projected both for prevalence and, and incidence. And, and overall, the modeling study shows that we are, uh, we are on the path to achieving the HC elimination targets by 2020. By 2020. And um, uh, this encouraging finding uh, further motivates us to get the job done and make elimination happen in Georgia. Uh, and finally, I would like to acknowledge um, all our sponsors and partners who helped uh, run the program. And special thanks to, um, uh, to Akaki Abutidze, Adamia, Sean Sharager, and Josephine Walker for helping me with data and slides for this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.